Well, well, well. Welcome back, hope you're doing well. Hope everything's going good. Uh, sorry I had another delay on videos and everything. I've been dealing with some migraines over the past couple months that have been causing me to be bedridden for a couple of days at a time, which has been kind of eating into my time overall. But anyways, uh, things have been mostly better. I just hope that things continue to stay that way, but that's not why you're here. Today I wanted to talk about artistic stoicism, stoicism in general. I, I don't even know if anyone knows what stoicism is when it comes to the general term, but I wanted to kind of explain the baseline of it, how I've been approaching art a lot more stoically recently, and how that might be able to help most artists that are dealing with a lot of volatility and a lot of emotional ties to art that could be stopping them from making art, could be causing them to have a really solid relationship with either other artists or artwork in general and how they, you know, judge themselves from themselves to another person. So let's get into it and talk about stoicism and why it could generally be helpful for most artists, especially in today's day and age when you can just see everyone's work and, and appreciate everyone's work. But that might not always be the way that you look at it. The, the guys might be that you are, are very jealous or you, you feel attacked somehow because people are doing well. A pretty common thing that happens these days. But let's start with what stoicism is as a practice. So if you look it up, stoicism has a lot of different uh, general ideas and tendencies, a lot of different values depending on where you look. Some definitions will tell you that it's going through a hardship and not being you know, very affected by it, or it's a ability to overcome a situation without being super emotional, stuff like that. But there are some camps that have a full philosophy on stoicism and how it can be used to address a lot of approaches to most anything in life. And the idea is that being stoic about the goings on of life means to approach everything with kind of a level attitude. You take the virtues of life, the hardships of life, the goods and the bads, and you kind of approach them with the same mindset, the same attitude. You do not you know, fall into despair or really overplay happiness when it comes to those situations. Now, I know what you're thinking. That might sound kind of negative in some ways and then positive in others. But I think that's kind of the point. I think stoicism is supposed to be a balancing act of responding to inputs flatly, taking everything in stride and not letting it affect you a ton just you know appreciating everything to the level that it requires to see fit uh, rather than having it affect your whole world so why is this good for artists and how is that different than a lot of what you see today with artists and people that are trying to improve at anything in in a creative outlet well i think nowadays everyone calls their phone a joy killer like it, it just removes the joy from life when it comes to people that are stuck online stuck you know doom scrolling everything like that it's hard to pull away from that with a positive aspect like a positive result it's always easier to compare and then shove yourself downwards well this has a lot of different outlets when it comes to creative people uh, artists you know musicians anything like this it's easy to have an emotional and volatile attitude. You got a lot of highs and you got a lot of lows. The issue with that is those types of things can spark from so many different directions in today's day that it's almost impossible to regulate and just do the thing instead of being affected emotionally. So let's, let's say you open Twitter and you see someone making something great, or maybe their their tweet is performing well, or maybe someone's uh, music video is performing well on YouTube. Who knows? It could be a lot of things. Those things can have an effect on people that are just trying to make it. Maybe they're trying to get started, or maybe they're struggling with art and they're trying to 
figure out what they're doing wrong. And then they see someone who just, you know, pops in and they're doing everything perfectly and why can't they just do that? And that causes some lows, some volatility, some emotional attitude towards artwork that can actually stop them from progressing even more because they're they're looking at all this input and they're like, well, I can't compete with that. Why should I even try? Or maybe it just, you know, puts them out of the game for a little while. That is something that stoicism can help you to deal with. I think the idea of artistic stoicism takes a lot of the baseline of what the philosophy stands for and it puts it into context in a couple specific situations, at least in ways that I've been using it, that help me to be a bit more level-headed about a lot of things. I've been trying to learn quite a lot uh, when it comes to art and when it comes to uh, you know, uh, trying different styles, different approaches, things like that, and it can be a lot in my brain. It, it, there's a lot to absorb, there's a lot of emotional points where maybe something doesn't work out, there's a lot of potential for things to not go your way. And it's easy for you to look at that and say, well, why can't I? And then go down the wormhole. But it's important to allow yourself to take a step back and realize that, hey, this is where I can shove in some of that stoicism. I have been trying to approach things in a way recently where everything is reduced to the action when it comes to what's input in my noggin. So let's say that I'm trying out a new style or I'm trying out a new approach to something specific in the art process. Let's say that I'm trying a new approach to rendering. It's less about the people doing it, the people I'm studying from, who's in that general circle and comparing myself to all of those things. And it's more so about taking the information and applying it. What do they do? How can I do that? What can I pull? What can I use? Period. I don't think about anything beyond that. I don't see it as a, well, they can do this, but I can only do it so far as this. Those things don't matter. What they can do and what you cannot do are not going to affect this moment. You cannot change those differences in skill. You cannot change the way that they are perceived, the way that you're perceived, the way that the pieces are perceived, the way that anything is done in a way that is going to drastically change your artwork in that moment. So why are you going to pay so much emotional interest to those things that are not actually affecting your skill and your artwork and letting yourself either be upset by it, stop working, you know, just have a negative attenuation to everything that is in that space for you. Why do this when you can just perceive and achieve, I guess would be the wording for it. Um, but in, in realistic terms, I'm just here to study. I'm just here to, to see an idea and try it. See an idea and try it. See an idea and try it. That's all there is to it and then improving those things as I go along and, and discover the things that I actually want to do, things I want to keep, the stuff I want to use. That's all that matters. And that's all that those people are even doing in the first place. You see all the greats, you see all the, the classical masters of painting, you see all the line masters, all the people that are amazing at drawing portraits, yada yada. I'm pretty sure the majority of the time spent for them hasn't been them comparing to others emotionally or them wishing that they were this or that and then going down the wormhole of feeling emotional or volatile highs and lows yada yada or getting caught up in doing something well even and then realizing that oh this this thing is is actually not all there is that is the point it's to remove your emotion from the equation treat it as the action which is just studying and applying and realizing that there is always improvement to be had and you will make that improvement. There is an other end to this though. You see a lot of the lows and a lot of the negative emotional and volatile like attitude towards things 
but it's easy to get caught in the highs and allow that to distract you from continuing to improve as well. I've seen this firsthand where it's either me <laughs> or uh, someone that I'm uh, teaching something to where they are caught up either in something familiar that they feel they do incredibly well or something they've achieved that they don't think that they can outperform. And I think the issue with that is you bottleneck yourself and pigeonhole yourself into that thing, that moment in time, and that mindset of something. Now, of course, it's good to have standards and averages, things that you can rely on to get to a, a good point in your work. But it's also important to realize that there are no holy grails. Like there is no be all end all of how you approach something in art. And there is no one thing or one way to do something that is going to give you the God's end result. There's always going to be an iteration of what you're doing. There's always going to be an improvement or a tinker, a high and a low when it comes to you performing something well, or maybe you're having an off time where you're not doing something so well. These things come and go. Art is like a tide. You have a high tide, you have a low tide. Sometimes you're doing well, sometimes you're you know, struggling. Sometimes you're trying to figure out something. Sometimes you think you know it all. But those highs and lows, both in their own different ways, cause you to be distracted from the point, which is to sit down and draw, right? There's too much negative emotion when it comes to, oh, can I do this? Can I perform on the level of everyone else that's around me? Or getting caught up in, well, you know, I think I've kind of figured out how to draw a nose, so I'm just, uh, I just got it like that. I'm just not going to figure out anything else, really. And then what good does that do you? There's, there's so much more out there for you to try, so many different ways to try it. Why limit yourself? I once saw an artist, uh, this was recent, that was talking about not drawing guys anymore because they felt limited by what society told them they were allowed to put guys in. Uh, when it comes to clothing, when it comes to the silhouettes guys are allowed to have, things like that. And you know what? That kind of sounds like another red flag about how you perceive something or approach something that is limiting your ability to do something. It, it sounds like, oh, hey, I've looked out and seen what everyone else is doing, and uh, it just seems like I can't do this. So why would I even try? And does that sound like something I was talking about before? It's a different take on a high and low, an emotional response, and quote, correct solution or correct take to have when it comes to how to treat or to do something in art. And I think that's a big red flag. Art is supposed to be an open book. You're supposed to be able to do whatever you want, however you want, and create things that are unique, right? So why limit yourself? Why limit yourself attitude-wise? Why limit yourself emotionally? Why limit yourself to comparing and contrasting? Just take the information and do with it what you will, you know? You will continue to improve so long as you do not limit yourself to these things. And it's hard. Uh, it's, it's hard to not be affected by what's around you. I think we're, we're very social people, regardless of whether or not we <laughs> enjoy uh, being social. But it's just something that's kind of built into us. So it's important for us to allow that to guide us in the things that are actually tangible and allow that to help us to continue to improve ourselves rather than to give us setbacks. Uh, things that make us not want to draw, things that make us not want to do this, things that make us not want to step out of our comfort zones. There's so many different pitfalls. Just let stoicism keep you at the baseline. And that is just to say, hey, I'm just going to sit down and practice this. Oh, well, you know what? That didn't work out but I'll try it again next time. It probably will work out. And if it does, then hey, congrats. But also, that ain't it, chief. There's more to do. On to the next one.
And it, to most people that I explain this to, they say, well, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It just seems like you don't have a passion for art or, or anything like that anymore. And uh, that, that couldn't be farther from the truth. I feel so excited to continue to create new designs, so excited to try new things, but it's just because I feel like I'm being realistic about it. I feel like I am improving at certain things and I'm still lacking or maybe regressing in other things. So I'm just, I just gotta fix it up. It's no big deal. It's not a, a huge uh, end of the world situation. Maybe I like suck at making shoes or something and, and drawing now. Okay, cool. Study some shoes, fix it, you know? Everyone has gotten to a certain point. They're gonna keep pushing the needle and they can just pick up some things, fix them along the way. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. At least that's kind of how I see stoicism these days. It is a, it's not a big deal type situation when it comes to this. It shouldn't be. Art started off as something fun. Why does it have to turn into something that is such a volatile and competitive mindset area? It, it doesn't have to be. It can be just a thing that you do that you enjoy and you're gonna improve at. Everything else is details. So to wrap it up, the idea is to keep your chin up, but don't point it to the ceiling. No one wants to see your neck. Like they're not, they're not here to, to look at your neck when they're talking to you. It's important to keep that level head don't let yourself get down from whatever is online uh, when it comes to art, comparisons, contrasting, anything like that. But also don't, don't stick your chin too far up there, bud. All right. Every single person will tell you whether they've been doing it for a year, 10 years, 50 years. You're always learning. You're always improving. And I think that is the thing that should be looked forward to. Good to keep that level mindset. Just something I thought I'd, you know, spit out. Uh, it's something I've been thinking about quite a lot recently. So if any of this resonates with you, I hope that uh, it gives you some kind of anchor point to start looking at those things and to start adjusting how you think about them. I think it's an important thing to look at, especially when you're stuck in a chair and your hand is doing stuff, but your mind has a lot of time to think. You know what I mean? So... Just something to, to think about, and I hope you guys all are doing well. So thank you guys for listening, and take care.